welcome back to it, you beautiful people. Your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso live on the SABC3. Oh, what a busy. <laughs> Got that? Busy <laughs> morning. Oh, my dear. Why are you being like that, Tabs? <laughs> ah, now, people, uh, of course, keep bees for many different reasons. One of the most important reasons being pollination and honey production. We see it. Uh, and beekeeping is said to be both relaxing and rewarding. But it's important to note that if you keep bees, you're required to register as a beekeeper with the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Because you are, in, in essence, you know, uh, in that space playing in that space. Now, we are joined by uh, Chloe Masehela, who's the chairman of the Western Cape Bee Industry Association, uh, the WCBA, which is a provincial beekeeping buddy. Uh, and of course, he's sitting here with us to tell us more about the beehive certification process, which sounds like a fascinating thing. Chloe, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good morning, and thanks for having me on the show. Mm. It's good to yeah. have you, man. So I've got to ask, firstly, what is what, what does the organization actually do, the WCBA? Yeah. And you're the chairman of it, of course, but tell us more about it. What, what are you guys up to? Yeah, I mean, we've been in existence since 1911. So that oh. makes it about 109 years or so. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I've only been involved with the organization for the past five or so years, and this is my third year. Serving for anyone office. who was thinking that you've been involved since 1911, <laughs> that, thanks for clearing that up. Um, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> fortunately not, because uh, I would be like a, an old tree sitting <laughs> right here. Um, so yeah, we, at, from a provincial level, we, we play a role that most associations uh, play in any other industry. So uh, our main focus is really to bring the beekeepers into the, in the province together, yeah. a cohesion, um, and also we are a representative body. So, uh, you know, uh, any issues around, you know, beekeeper professionalism, mm. the services they provide. We also provide an educational platform. So from yeah. time to time, we have great field days mm. where beekeepers from, you know, different parts of the province can come together. Mm. It's a space for them to learn from each other, to share skills, to yeah. share knowledge, you know, learn from each other about the bees. Because the more practical experience you have, the better it is. You yes. know, with beekeeping, you learn each and every day. Oh, it sounds it's always like a fascinating. It. We are learning so much just mm -hmm. having you guys here today. But let's talk about this bee certification process, which mm -hmm. speaks to the fact that if you are going to have bee, a beehive uh, in even your own residential property, you've got to have the certification for it. What is that process? Why is it important? So it's, uh, I mean, in your introduction, you rightfully said that they have to register with the Department of Agriculture, uh, Land Reform and Rural Development, mm -hmm. as they are called now. They used to be DAF, but we are all getting used to the new acronym. Yeah. So basically, it's free of charge. There's no fee attached to it. Mm -hmm. There's just a form that one needs to complete and, and send it to the department. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can always share the details later. Uh, so this is compliance, you know, with any other industry. There are regulations yeah. and policies and acts around it. Mm. Um, so the compliance is it's under the Agricultural Pest Act, Act 36 of 1983. It's also got some supplementary regulations around it. And the recent one, I think it is um, R 1511, mm -hmm. which made some very interesting changes to the landscape. Uh, before 2018, um, beekeepers were required to only register for one year. Okay. So the changes are now that you, when you you register since the beginning of this year, mm. uh, your certification is valid for two years, mm. as opposed to the one year. Mm. And the other big change that also came was that um, only beekeepers were supposed to register at the time. Okay. So now, even if you are a bee remover or offering bee removal services, mm. you do have to register with uh, uh, the department. Okay. Yeah. So let's say hypothetically I had a beehive in my house. Mm -hmm. Do I need to register that and get it certified? Is that important and, and why? It's very important. Even if you've got one hive, you know. Wow. Just one hive. So, uh, and people would say, no, you are a hobbyist. You're just, you know, interested in your one hive in the garden. But you do have to register. Yeah. The key thing here is that uh, we all have to make sure that when we do beekeeping, it's done in a way that the bees are protected. Mm. It's all about sustainability. Mm. We know how bees are important now for pollination, especially for the crops yeah. uh, that we rely on as, as food, as fruits, nuts, and so on. Mm. So it's basically for compliance. And we also, it's an inventory kind of, uh, you know, uh, keeping. So we, we need to know how many bees we have, uh, beehives we have in the yes. country, uh, where they are, you know, and also for reporting purposes. I mean, like any other livestock, bees get infected by certain diseases, mm. 
pathogens, viruses, and so on. And there needs to be a reporting line along that. So if you're not registered and we don't know where these hives are, it makes it very difficult when we have to deal with issues around, you know, pests and diseases and so on. You've used the name beekeeper quite often in this chat. Yes. Uh, uh, so if I'm someone who is sitting at home in Hamanskral mm -hmm. and there's a tree and the bees just, they rock up <laughs> and they do an informal settlement and they yes. settle themselves there, I didn't go fetch them. Mm -hmm. Do I need to go register? Or what do I need to do then? <laughs> okay, so everyone could, can be a beekeeper. Um, the, the only definition of having the bees in the box that we are all used to hmm. uh, is because it makes it easy for you to manage the bees in there and move them around. But if you still have an old tree uh, stump or a bark where the bees move in, hmm. you know, you could still look after the bees in that sense. Okay. And now internationally and also here in South Africa, we've got a, a trend of the bee hotels that a lot of people are creating, you know, in their backyards. That's so you cool. know, But those you don't have to register and they don't have to get like a registration number that you step okay. onto your hive. But in that sense, you can still look after the bees, yeah. provide them with bee-friendly plants, yeah. uh, water resources here and there, mm -hmm. so that they are well looked after for our environment. Your organization has all of that information. Indeed, it does. Yeah, but yeah. Too, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the studio. Of course, I think we all are loving the knowledge when it comes to bees, how important they are when it comes to our agriculture as well, with pollination and the fact that you guys are doing such incredible work. We can't thank you enough. It's the chairman of the Western uh, Cape uh, uh, Bee Industry Association. And of course, guys, you also need to register yourselves if you have a beehive with the Department of Forestry, Fishing and uh, Agriculture. <laughs> Agriculture. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> so make sure you register on that one. And again, Tulu, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Always welcome. Thanks. <laughs>